All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to begin with our next page of notes. This is still module one, so please write module one notes at the top, your name and number up in the corner as you see on my page. We are going to put the Roman numeral three, looks like three eyes with bars on the top and the bottom, Roman numeral three, because again, this will be lesson three, module one, lesson three, Today we're going to focus on exponents, exponents, and place value units. Place value units, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Specifically though, place value units, we're dealing with the powers of 10 that we've been working with. We're going to continue with that today. We'll just talk about how we can write them using exponents. Subheading A, we have a little bit of vocabulary that I would like to share with you. Number one, let's talk about what an exponent even is. Exponent. Okay. Now I'll give you a better definition in a moment, but an exponent is those little raised numbers, those little tiny numbers that sometimes you see next to a larger number. An exponent is a raised, it needs to be up off the line, a raised symbol. Now for us, they're always going to be numbers, but as you get older, you may see other symbols. A raised symbol that represents, going into the margin a little bit there, but that's okay. A raised symbol that represents the number of times, the number of times a number will be multiplied times itself. Now many students try to multiply that original number times the exponent, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. Let's do one more vocabulary word, and then I'll show you exactly what I mean. While we're working, you may hear me refer to the base. The base is just the number being multiplied. So let's record that so we don't forget. The number being multiplied. The number being multiplied. Now let's talk procedure. There's not a whole lot of process that I need to give you on this particular lesson, so it's actually going to be more about demonstration. Let me show you, let me demonstrate how you're going to read these things. Okay. I'm going to start by working backwards. Let's say that I have quite a few numbers that I'm going to be writing. I know I'm going to multiply 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. You can see how repetitive this is. Now in standard form, we can record the answer. This is what you're most used to doing, what you are most accustomed to doing. And you're just going to multiply. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. And then 16 times 2 is 32. So again, there's standard form. That's pretty normal. That's what we're used to seeing. And for numbers like 32 that are only two digits, that's usually the best way. But as you move forward in math, as you move forward in science, the numbers are going to get really big. So sometimes it's better to write them a second way instead. Here's the exact same problem as before. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, blah, blah, blah. But this time, instead of solving it, which we already did, it wasn't hard, but instead of solving it, I am going to write the number that's repeating. This is going to be the base. 
the two, the two, okay? I'm just gonna write it one time. Then I'm going to count how many times is it being repeated? How many times am I multiplying it times itself? One, two, three, four, five. I put a little flying five, and that little flying five is my exponent. This is exponential form. Exponential form. Okay. Now, both of these, we've talked before about how you can expand the numbers out. Okay, We've talked about expanded form, or I suppose in this case, this would probably more properly be de decomposing the numbers. Okay. But over here is what I want you to focus on, the exponential form especially. Okay. In fact, I am going to blow it up and make it a bit bigger so we can really look at it. Okay. Two to the fifth power. Again, this small flying number, the little floating number up here, this is going to be your exponent. And it tells you how many times two which is the base, will be multiplied times itself. Two times two times two times two times two. Okay? We read this as two. And actually, let's put that here instead. Two to the power of five. Okay, two, once again, there's our base to the power of five, our exponent. You've probably heard me talking about power, the power of 10. This is what we're dealing with. A power of 10 is just 10 that has been multiplied times itself a certain number of times. To try to clear that up, we're going to do some examples together. But before we do that, one more thing. Let's continue with this little pro tip right here. Okay. Keep in mind, if you are using a power of 10, there is a shortcut. You can just count the zeros. You learn a lot by counting zeros. Count the zeros in a power of 10. Again, in a power of 10, 10, 100, 1,000, 1 million. Count the zeros in a power of 10. That, that number of zeros, that is your exponent after a 10. Okay, so what does that mean? Let's jump into the examples so we can talk about it. What you are going to see in the learn book, what you are going to see in your homework is going to look like this. Okay. Let's say I give you 10,000. 10,000. This is a power of 10. That means I can count the zeros to figure out what exponent I would use. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, four zeros, one, two, three, four. So my exponent should be four. And down here for my base, I'm always going to use 10. Think about it. 1, 2, that's 100, times 10 again, that's 3 tens, that's 1,000, times 10 again. 1, 2, 3, 4 tens, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 again is 10,000. All you need to do is count the zeros. Make that your exponent after the 10. OK, 
Okay, let me give you something a little different. Let's say we have 1,000 times 100. Oh no, I've broken them up. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I still think to myself, one, two, three, four, five zeros. The answer will be a 10 with a five for an exponent. The exponent is the number of zeros. One, two, three, four, five, number of zeros. Okay. Now, going back and forth, I don't think will be too tricky. Again, I could even continue with this if I want to change this into standard form. Just put a one and then that many zeros. One, two, three, four, five. Count your three per period, put a little comma. So the answer to this problem would be 100,000. And hopefully you can see that if you have a thousand times 100, that's 100 of those, 100 thousands. Okay. So going back and forth is not too tricky. Where it gets interesting is when we start seeing problems to work out. Now we're not going to spend too much time calling it this, but I'll mention if you've ever heard of scientific notation. This is very useful in science when we're dealing with very big numbers or very small numbers. 8 times 10 to the third. What do we do with this? All you're going to do, 8 is 8, change the 10 to the power of 3, 10 to the third power, 10 to the power of 3, change it to a 1 with that many zeros after it. 1, 2, 3. Most of you can look at that and give me an answer right away. 8 thousand. Okay. Now, we can do the same thing with division. And I'm going to use this particular problem because it also shows how we deal with decimal points. And really, how we deal with decimal points is exactly what we've been doing. Okay. Set the problem up, write it out. Leave this part alone translate, change the power of 10, 10 to the second power, change it to a 1 with that many zeros after it. 1, 2. Oh, I made a small mistake. I'm sorry. We're going to go ahead and divide there. Okay. I want to make sure we're taking our time. Hopefully that looks a little better. Okay, So we should be dividing, dividing. Again, I wrote the wrong thing. We just fixed that. So, 17 and 2 tenths divided by 100. Now we think back to our place value charts. I know that if I'm dividing, the digits are going to move to the right. And I know that if I am dividing by 100, they're going to move two places to the right. So that means my final answer should look like that. Now we'll do some practice in class as well, but for now, make sure you've got that written down. If you need to go back and review, go back and review, and we will talk about it in class tomorrow. All right, thanks everybody. That's it for Module 1, Lesson 3.